Welcome to the second artist talk of uh, international group exhibition uh, White Reflex Sunlight, Fuck Your Albedo. With this exhibition, we're aiming to warn and shock about the consequences of our behavior, but at the same time, we're questioning and considering the ways of uh, surviving or even adapting to our future environments. Helped by introducing the five amazing artists we invited to contribute to the show. Um, it's uh, Spela Petric, uh, um, Adrian Uhazi, uh, Lindsay Nicholson, Paula Flores, and Elina Kersten. Uh, exhibition is already on in our gallery space. You can view it uh, from outside through the window, so find a good reason to uh, pass by Randolph Gaza 42. Also, you can view exhibition uh, virtually. Our virtual exhibition is in Kunstmatrix um, Art Spaces website. Uh, you can find the link in our website on our social media channels. Also, uh, we started already our live artist talk last week with, uh, with the talk uh, artist and scientist Lindsay Nicholson. And if you want to listen to this conversation, you can also find it on, uh, on our website on social media. Um, today we are having here Adrian Uhazi. Um, artist uh, who is uh, she is based in Serbia. Uh, in her work she examines uh, the relationship between nature and man um, in a field of um, also including the fields of um, ecological uh, art and bio art in the form of uh, various uh, visual media. Um, I want to welcome Adrian here. Uh, Hello. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Hi, everyone. <laughs> Very nice to have you here. Adrian, could you please um, shortly introduce yourself? Yeah, sure. So I'm a young Serbian artist based in Novi Sad in Serbia. And I finished the Academy of Arts also in the same city. And my artistic practice is usually um, in the form of process art. So because I finished the painting department during the years, I found out that it would be interesting uh, in our country to develop something new in new media, also to incorporate in some kind of um, two-dimensional form. And so um, my idea was, because I love biology and also I was creative as I was growing up, I found it interesting in some way to make two pieces in one. So my main plan during the studies was to slowly try in, in different um, forms to describe my idea, to make an art form which is a hybridish um, organic piece. And so I found it fascinating how is biology and biomorphic forms in nature uh, evolving um, based on their habitat and circumstance. So as, as an artist, as a painter, uh, it was very interesting to me to find a new medium which was uh, uh, organic and we can say it like environmental friendly uh, to make it uh, uh, one object which can be in this case, in my case, a painting. So I tried to find different um, solutions for that and it was mainly uh, different uh, plant-based materials. Usually I was during the bachelor studies I used um, seeds uh, and different uh, natural based and plant based uh, materials like uh, wax or uh, flower because it was a seed after it became a flower so it was pretty like an formalic approach but after that I was trying to find um, a material uh, to make it by myself to be like a simulation of a canvas which was uh, a growing plant based uh, textile in some way. So I tried uh, a long, it was a long time, I needed a long time to find out what, which material can that be in that case. So I found SCOBY, which is like an acronym for symbiotic culture of bacteria and yeast. So it's a bacterial colony which is made by fermentation and I can proudly say 
that I am the one person in Serbia who has that artistic practice. So uh, there is another colleague, uh, but she's from Bosnia, from the, another um, friend country. Uh, her name is Maya Halilovic, but uh, the main part is that uh, she's doing that, for example, in the field of design. So I'm incorporated this material in the fine art field, like a visual, visual art theme, but she's also working in a design. And after that, uh, my new process and collaboration, for example, is uh, out now uh, on YouTube. And we are promoting this material, uh, the SCOBY on the Balkan territories, because uh, there is nobody who is working with this kind of alternative and plant-based materials. Very interesting, thank you. Uh, can you tell us a bit more? How did you come to SCOBY? And um, I have maybe a funny question. Um, how was it related to this um, um, very, um, very popular um, kombucha SCOBY growing uh, trend? Yeah, it is interesting because, for example, in the late of 20th century on our territory, there was an alternative that people on, in their homes, they were using this material. I mean, they drank kombucha and it was a normal thing that every home, every grandma had it and they knew the whole process, but they didn't knew the potential of the scoby. So the material, what can be used? So it's now because of this uh, beginning of, um, bio art and um, process art uh, practice. Uh, the artists and incorporating with the scientists, uh, they came for different kind of solutions that it is a big potential for the material in this case to use it in different fields, which can be, for example, a good alternative for textile, like uh, Susan Lee does it, and she's a uh, very famous and a, a great uh, bio, designer in England. So that's a huge step and it would be great to to like um, have a bigger picture of, of the material because uh, it's now it's all I mean it's still under under this um, experimental approach you know so we need more time to figure out what is the potential of the material you know. Um, maybe it would be interesting, not everyone, I guess, like tried to, to grow kombucha scoby. Could you shortly introduce to the process of growing scoby? Yeah, uh, the interesting part is that it's really easy to make it. So uh, the process is also like um, from two free uh, materials, which everybody has in their home. So usually we just need a clear bottle in that case. Um, a tea and uh, I mean a tea like green or black tea in that case. So it can be any tea but I recommend green or black tea because of the high pH val value because it, it, the whole fermentation process needs the high value of this acidity uh, which has this um, kind of herb. So that is the interesting part of it and the end if you need to make a kombucha you just make a simple black tea and put it on the fermentation process but the a little bit complicated uh, thing can be in this case that uh, if you don't have a good space for that where is not enough oxygen you need to have a clear space everything has to be sterilized during the whole process and etc so it, it can be in some case um it can go bad because um before the whole uh, fermenting process, it can, um, on the surface of the beverage, uh, it can appear like a mold or something different kind of little micro lives can appear, how can I say? So um, it can go in that way or just simply you have a pure development of a, of a biofilm which is a cellulose and you can use it as a paper if you are dehydrating it. So in my practice, um, I found out that I can make an organic painting through that, that I am um, 
in some way dehydrating and fixing it with oil um, and using different pigments in that case. And I'm putting also different vitamins and it's, it's a specific approach towards that because I'm an artist, but I am also in some way in contact with some scientist friends. But in Serbia, it's a special uh, thing because um, here's not developed that kind of area and collaboration between art and scientists. It's coming on the surface, but it's still in a big process. It needs more time to have this full symbiotic relationship between two fields. So we are at that moment because Novi Sad is becoming the capital uh, city of culture the second year. It was planned for the 2021, but it will be 2020 because of the situation with the virus. So we are hoping for that it will develop and we will have great, um, great uh, opportunities to show the young art scene and something alternative, what can uh, art bring uh, to the serpents for the culture. My next question, or oh, maybe I also, uh, maybe you can add to that also, um, how are you accepted as a painter working with alternative material, not like very classic material for painting in a painter society? And uh, how is it in Serbia for you? And maybe how is it worldwide? Is it like more accepted that you can paint actually with live material? Yeah, in Serbia, it's not a common medium, as I can say it. So uh, some people are very curious about that, how I'm, uh, how I came for this solution, you know, how, how was the whole process? They having similar questions what you did uh, before. And for me, it's a big, um, like, I have a positive attitude towards that because I'm found very interesting that visual art is one of the main tools for communications to public. It's a universal language. Uh, for uh, people. So uh, through my work in that case, I'm trying to point in, in this case on the ecological crisis. What is this whole exhibition about? So uh, the main thing is that we are massively polluted, especially, for example, my home country, Serbia, this year was the most polluted city around the globe. So it's really sad. And uh, we need to talk about it more. So I am have to mention it. I'm really happy that I'm part of this exhibition because uh, it has to be in some way uh, international to bring uh, different people who are working in this topic and to discuss what each person, artist or scientist are thinking about this. So, um, for example, in Serbia, people are just getting to notice this uh, pieces, what we need. So I'm really hoping for that, that the last two or three years, it will be better in that case for the art scene also, because um, before there wasn't a lot of artists who were working with natural materials, but during the last two years, for example, it got bigger. But there's much more artists now who are working with at least natural mater materials because the whole uh, process of making an art piece, I mean, I'm now speaking from the perspective of painter, that's one of the reasons why I started to use this material like ecological friendly and the whole process is more environmental friendly. Yeah? So the main thing is that artists are usually buying a lot of paints in this case. So the whole package of the acrylic color or the brushes, they are wrapped in plastic in this case. So they can find another alter uh, alternative to use this uh, approach in some way to, you know, they can buy some paints or pigments maybe. So they can have a reusable bottle for that, or there's always a solution because I know some people, they are just using it and just throwing away. So they are making a lot of um, trash from their process, but they are uh, in, in some way like um, promoting this topic. So you have to be careful. What are you talking about and what are you using in your practice? You know, so it has a different approach. That's why 
in this case, my artistic work, it's getting in that way to get clear, you know, so I'm using natural and from nature colors or by um, because of the electronics, you know, so that's why I'm uh, saying for my art, I'm using visual uh, different visual languages because I'm using also, for example, light to present my work. Light is also part of presenting something which is natural. So here is the big um, dialogue between uh, something is which what is natural and what is artificial and uh, yeah <laughs> and I, I think it also takes uh, takes um, a courage or uh, openness and uh, flexibility of artists uh, to change the process of work because like for painters uh, this process is like existing for really long and uh, it's not easy to be so open and flexible to try it, something else in the process yes Yes, for example, at the beginning, the art scene in Serbia, uh, they was very, they were very curious and they, they were open, but they were pretty conservative about my art, you know, so I needed to explain to everybody and I'm now doing it also. So, for example, my solo exhibitions are all about um, little processes. For example, I have different rooms with different setups. So when I'm having a tour, I'm, um, like trying to explain for everybody like uh, which room is for which pro process which stadium is about so for example i had uh, last month uh, an exhibition and it was like from three spaces for for example the first place uh, was a presentation of my own studio in some way like a simulation of my studio so i um, presented all of my works in that case i'm uh, i what I used during the whole process. So they were uh, ready-made objects. So it was like Petri dishes, um, I don't know, some other little uh, forms, <laughs> lives and everything. Um, in the second room, it was totally different with prints and with some installations, uh, which are, uh, for example, presented also on this exhibition. Uh, on at Vienna at your gallery space so the whole process is also um part of my artistic practice and the presentation so it has this equality uh, to me and and uh, and that I found it very important in that case that it's not only the result is important it's also important the whole uh, period how did you get that uh, piece the production so uh, that's why I'm making different photos and I'm documenting the whole process, the richness of this Kobe. So this uh, something what is like unseen gets under the surface and we have this cellulose, which is interesting and uh, based on the circumstances and which space is presented, their form is changing in some way. So I'm having this documented with different appearance of uh, more different colors. So it's very interesting to me as a visual person, how can I present that? So, and also what is the potential of that material? So, because who knows, maybe one day we will use it on everyday level, you know, so we can make different things about it. It can be an alternative for textile, for paper, and maybe for architecture or uh, interior. So I found it very important and we are on that process to develop something which can change our everyday life, I think. Yes, hopefully it, uh, it will be used more often and uh... Uh, and for all this, it's good reasons. Um, you all, uh, as I understood, I, I can call you a, a pioneer and an educator of uh, natural material in art in Serbia, because you also tell how you stage the exhibition. It's very educative and informative. Um, I also know that you work as a teacher. Could you shortly tell? Yes, during my studies, I started to work as a teacher. So I was also a student and also a teacher, which was very interesting to me. <laughs> and I, I found that opportunity as a gift because I have that um, time to spend online at the moment, yes, <laughs> with uh, the younger generation, with young creative persons and to follow it, how are they thinking and uh, how are they working, how, 
what is their creative or approach towards some things what they are surrounded by or uh, it's it's uh, an interesting thing because me as a student and with my fellow colleagues how are we seeing some stuff and some students who are from high school um they are just younger maybe more around 10 years so it's you know it's not much and the whole perspective of how are they seeing for example our environment is massively different so i found it very interesting in that case as a teacher uh, to educate them and to show them only uh, not only that there's a fine art field they can be more open for visual art and what can art be today because uh, my job is to teach them how to paint and the painting techniques especially so uh, it was very important to me that it's the art is not only about painting and traditional materials as a teacher i'm just doing my thing to open to open a door for them so it's up on them if they're going to cross that to go to another space so <laughs> yeah um but they are very interested to that but they need, also need a good base to know what is the whole art history what is the whole background how the artist and the whole important figures got for some conclusions and etc so um as a young teacher i can say uh, we have a creative generation, but we need to be open for them that they can be also open for us. So that's very important because today we have some older teachers who are working in the same process, maybe 30 years. So that's very important, especially I'm talking in, in this territory. I don't know, especially how is, for example, in Vienna or something. So, um, but I found it very important, yeah, to educate them what's happening at the moment at that current space and time so they can be and follow that whole process and to make an art piece or and to be creative in that moment you know thank you it's very important what to do yeah <laughs> um maybe we can now move to uh, biophilia, the artwork we are exhibiting in our exhibition. Uh, how was the idea born? Yeah, the biophilia was, uh, I can say it, it was my master's project when I started to develop this organic material, the SCOBY. And I found it interesting uh, uh, in some, in which way I can incorporate the name of the exhibition and to present something which is organic. So I tried to uh, do a deeper research about it and I found a um, famous uh, American writer and biologist. His name is Edward Wilson and he's very famous, very famous <laughs> about his um, uh, hypo hypothesis of biophilia. So that was the main, the breaking point when I decided what is biophilia and what is the meaning of that uh, term so uh, bi biophilia is the something what uh, every living being is inside of it and the human being is also part of it so us human beings are we need to be uh, part of that other piece and species so we are one uh, whole I can say it like that. <laughs> so it's it's really interesting term, and I recommend for everybody to read his uh, book. It's not long, and you have it on internet also. It's it's really educative in that case. So, bio biophilia was for me a big eye opening um, project in in that case. Um, so yeah. <laughs> I wanted so much to tell, but I forgot <laughs> it at this moment. <laughs> no worries. I also found uh, that um, Eric Fromm framed uh, biophilia as a passionate love of life and of all that is alive. Yes, exactly. That's uh, something similar to what I said before. <laughs> <laughs> I really uh, like it and uh, I also wanted to, to drag it maybe to this um, 
um, uh, topic of aesthetics of your artwork. It, it can be not very pleasant for, for everyone, but, yes. uh, but I mean, that's also like always um, comes to this, um, uh, what is beauty or pleasant uh, uh, object to, to look at. Uh, and uh, usually we can see it totally different when we find this kind of intellectual element in the object. Mm -hmm. And with, uh, um, with um, uh, Scooby, is, it's very uh, obvious because of the all advantages it has. Yes. Um, do you think people like uh, really take, uh, take notice of this and, and change or a bit um, reconstruct their aesthetic uh, uh, understanding? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> well, every time when I'm having an exhibition or a social media comment, people are like, uh, what is this material? So they are curious what it is, how, does it, how did I came to that material? Um, so every time I'm trying to have a dialect with each person, if I can, or on an exhibition, I have a full tour about it so I can talk about the whole process. Um, but uh, there are some people who are in some way like discussed because it has a specific aesthetic but we can also talk about what is beautiful today like beautiful um which is a specific topic yeah so because something is made out of nature but we don't see it like a micro life which is also part of us or we are part of it um we cannot call it i think ugly or disgusting or something like that so it has it has their own specific beauty as every each person does it, for example. So uh, this is why we need to educate people. Maybe, I don't know. So yeah, it is interesting because there is a lot of um, surfings for this topic because the SCOBY is something like fragile and organic and cultivated, you know, material what which can be manipulated like a hundred percent but we are still on that process so i think there is a lot more what we can in some way found out by this material because it's made by bacteria so we are also <laughs> made by bacteria and other microorganisms of course but um i think it is uh, important to educate people on the micro level to make another step and to think bigger on the macro level, you know. Yeah. I agree with you. Um, <clears throat> is, is biophilia an ongoing project? Um, in some way, I can say yes, because uh, the whole process of this um, SCOBY experimentation is yes, still in process, because it needs a lot of time for growing it. Uh, in my case, I have a smaller studio, and for example, in Serbia, artists are still fighting for the studio, and there are a lot of artists without the studio, um, and sometimes I'm making it at my home. So, for example, I also now trying to make new beverage for the winter session, <laughs> so I have a home studio and another studio on another place. Um, so, the biophilia project is an open long durational project so it is very Im important for me because uh, as an artist i'm very analytical i don't love to rush things especially when it comes to this kind of materials which is like every little detail can be important for some kind of appearance on the surface of the material and etc so uh, i have few plans for the future and I'm trying to in some way decode it, not literally, but to have a different interventions on it. So to tr I will try to find out new ways for visual presentation, but also to incorporate to design also. So one of my researches, it was also part of the biophilia, uh, was made last year, I think last year uh, i made an organic hat from it 
so it is possible to use the material and it's still full it's still okay so it nothing happened it's a total biodegradable material and the whole hat is eco-friendly in that case so there is a lot of opportunities but it depends from an artist uh, which way it's going to use it you know so i'm personally mm, trying to develop in the field of um, textile you know so mm, to make something uh, wearable of it but it's not necessary that i will just go in that direction so i have some things on my mind i hope i will have the opportunity to realize it because of this situation with the virus we couldn't as an artist i couldn't go to the laboratory to have different collaborations because usually the whole year was locked down <laughs> so uh, i hope the second year the 2021 it will be um more fertile in that case yeah uh, i think we all hope for the same um but let's come back to to biophilia as an artwork mm -hmm. itself um how is it presented how was uh, what was the process and how did you come up with this idea of presentation it presenting it in uh, presenting it sorry in uh, in print and video yes yeah, so the print and the video part is just a pure documentation which came out as a specific artwork so it was like only meant to be for that because it's not the current state but at the end i made a light box of it what i talked about when i was comparing light and organic natural materials so the result of the whole research was to make a two-dimensional uh, object which was in this case uh, a light box so I found out it was very unusual to represent this material under the light because there is a lot more when you just get under the surface um, and show it under different lightnings and colors. Um, and the whole process when I started to take photos and videos was uh, that moment. That's why I called it memento because uh, every minute was important for the whole process so i just captured that moment and it's going to last now you know so because that material will have the whole metamorphosis still you know <laughs> so it depends on me when i will dehydrate it and the whole and the end of this process was a presentation in the light box so yeah um and the different appearances uh, the colors was were, were very interesting to me because I'm not a biologist, so I'm also open maybe to not to be introduced to them. You know how these molds are functioning, and I'm trying to do that research online, but it's so open. So maybe some artists can have a direct um, contact, and they can collaborate with different uh, kind of biologist people or microbiologists mm -hmm. so it, it was very interesting because i have a friend and she was very surprised that me as an artist and uh, that i'm working with a material like this you know because that's mainly her field but she wasn't uh, introduced to that that is this bacterial cellulose can do something like that so it was interesting because nobody knew that's potential you know so yeah it's it's very interesting to play with this material because uh, i would love to find out the whole you know is there a border in some way for this you know what is the capacity for this material and how much is of this e experimenting um and uh, getting a visual uh, result and how much is like on your research and you basically know exactly what the result gonna be uh, i never know the result okay. <laughs> it's always <laughs> it's, it's always a surprise that's why i'm loving this material and especially because when i'm starting the whole process i'm just making the beverage and after that the whole development of the organic material gets their own making their own aesthetics you know so mm -hmm. it's a specific dialogue between me and something which is also 
living, you know, and the whole dialogue, it's um, continuing in a different form and in different medias. So um, it is very, very interesting for me, yeah. Uh, can I ask you how many? Yeah, I, I got some thoughts again because of this <laughs> conversation. I have to make some notes now. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Yeah, inspiring. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, I, I wanted to say about the whole process that uh, how I got to the light box. It, it was also a spontaneous moment when uh, I wanted to dehydrate my SCOBY, but I didn't have any. Um, flat surface so I put it in on a simple glass to dry it and the second day when I got to, the, to my studio I just saw it it was totally uh, like glued on it you know so I couldn't like pull up and it was like totally stuck on it on the glass so uh, that was my like literally aha moment <laughs> <laughs> that I, I don't need a glue or any kind of medium because the whole scoby can be dehydrated only just you know put in the glass and it will be like totally fixed on it so it's really interesting how you can use this material also in different kind of bases and different kind of material you know so it has a good potential maybe for architecture or you know so it's it has a good perspective and how many living scobies do you have at the moment in your studio oh i don't know at the moment i have a lot <laughs> yeah i have i have a lot because i'm having this um scoby hotel you call it uh, in this bigger jar so i'm collecting them for the further work so i hope that i will have soon maybe for the spring one whole piece finished because um for one piece for example for one light box i need at least half year or more to get it done so the whole process when I'm done the research with the SCOBY, the intervention and the whole um, artistic part, um, the whole finishing and the packaging part is the last one. So it's literally just put it inside and just present it. So that's the last step of the creation, <laughs> I can <laughs> say. Yeah, so it's a long process and that's, I, I'm fine with it because before when I started to use this material uh, I was an artist who was massively having the production you know lots of drawings paintings not literally paintings I work with uh, as I mentioned before different natural materials like uh, flower or sand or soil so more like an informalic informalic um, approach towards uh, the arts but I found this field more interesting so I'm still I will work on it <laughs> uh, and we have a question for you from yay <laughs> someone <laughs> okay uh, was there anything that was grown of the material during the process left out of the final artwork and um, did you make a selection or did you use everything you grew Yes, awesome question. <laughs> so uh, mainly I'm documenting everything, but it depends uh, what's my idea. So if I'm having a sketch, for example, what was my um, visualized idea for one piece, for example, one uh, light box, I'm using selected pieces of SCOBY because uh, during the whole process of fermentation, some SCOBYs will survive, or some not because of the mold. <laughs> so yeah, so I have to make a selection in that case, but the whole process is documented. So if it's going to survive or not. Thank you. Uh, Thank um, you. <laughs> <laughs> um, I wanted to ask you still about, um, let me think, I, I lost my thought now. Uh, <laughs> Um, um, uh, do you, uh, what, what's the current project? What you're working on now? 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, so at the moment I'm cultivating scobies because I'm trying, um, I will prepare uh, material for another experimentation because I got some um, interesting pigments from my friend and I will try to use them on the scobies. So it will, I don't love to talk ahead because I don't know what it will be look like. As I mentioned, <laughs> I don't know the whole process. I have to start and document it. So that's why it's also exciting uh, to be there and to every time when I'm cultivating a scoby, I'm following the whole process. I'm looking at it in, in kind of perspective of nurturing, you know, so you are always there for it <laughs> and having that relationship with the material. So I'm really like, sentimentally attached to my work in that case. <laughs> uh, we have more questions coming. Uh, yes. I think that that uh, adding to, to the last question, uh, do you have some future vision for material? For, for the material? I guess it's, uh, it's about SCOBY specifically. Uh, future vision in the field of visual arts or <laughs> it's it's a future vision for for the material so we're talking about yeah. the scoby as a material and what's your future vision for it mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah i was thinking thinking about that what can i make it and i think i mentioned it but just briefly that uh, i will try to kind of hack it we call it biohacking the material so for that process i will need a scientist to realize my vision so if it's going to happen it, it's it's about a specific textile so i'm trying uh, to develop something which can be adaptive on our every ba everyday base level you know so we can use it um and which will be eco-friendly of course biodegradable but i won't say which material and which form it will be <laughs> but yeah uh, I'm, I'm working on it for sure perfect and there was an uh the question i guess if you want to evolve it somehow okay so that's yes the it is mm -hmm. yes yes for sure so uh, the main point is that uh, my idea is to use it like every person should have one piece of SCOBY in their everyday life so they can make an easier everyday living, <laughs> you know. Totally agree. I'm, I'm thinking myself already a couple of weeks uh, that I should start growing SCOBY and use this material which can use for yeah, like yeah. a lot in everyday life and replace Literally. many things. Yeah. Literally, because the beverages, you know, they call it like as an elixir. So it's really healthy in, in that case. And it's for me, it's tasty. <laughs> so, I mean, every person is different. Somebody will say they don't like it. You will like it. So it depends also. But um, I'm consuming it regularly. It's really good. And you can put different flavors in it, different fruits in it, so it's, it can be really nice. <laughs> so I really uh, recommend it. And beside that, um, I had um, um, a workshop of SCOBY making last year in Spain. So it was a residency uh, for eco and uh, eco-friendly uh, artistic practice. And it was curated by Zeren Oruc, uh, the based in Serbia, but she's from Turkey, a young curator. Um, and it was a really nice uh, experience to me to present it to other artists. You know, how is the material made and what is the potential of it? So it's totally different when I'm just, you know, talking to you through video or, you know, <laughs> through the small <laughs> pages. Um, but in person, it's much more interesting because, you know, you have the chance to smell it, to taste it, and you get this whole picture of the material. So it's like a total different dimension, you know, so it's really exciting. <laughs> Sounds like it. And uh, um, I hope one day you can come here and we can participate sure. in your workshop. 
<laughs> I'm up for that, like a second edition realization of the <laughs> process, you know, so every artist will have a talk and a little workshop. I'm up for it. <laughs> it seems like we have a plan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, I don't see any more questions coming and our time is also coming to the end. Um, is there something you would like to add yourself? What did we well, mention? Maybe I can add something, but I think I mentioned it on the beginning, but it was who didn't saw the beginning of the, our conversation. <laughs> um, I found this exhibition really important. That's, that's the main thing because people need to be educated and art is something part of it. And especially visual art is the main uh, universal language when people can talk and with different kind of uh, fields. So I found it important and to add for other art teachers that maybe they can also think about that, that to show the younger generation what can art also be. So like process art and other contemporary art practices, it is really important for them also to know and what their future maybe will look like in that case, because our practice, I mean, uh, the artists who are uh, participating on this exhibition, uh, they are every every artist is specific. So I'm really glad that I can be in, in that uh, <laughs> small crew <laughs> with you guys um, and to make something good, you know. So I'm really happy about that. Thank you so much. It's it's very nice to hear and uh, um, also I'm very happy you agree with the importance of the show and we again very happy to have it uh, have you there <laughs> so um i guess we um mm, about to end i can just remind everyone that you can watch uh, talks later also we have recorded it and we share recorded uh, recordings on our website and social media after um the live talk we you still can watch today i think for some time not sure about it uh, so thank you adrian again thank um, you was if anybody has questions they can write to me or to you guys so you can send it to me <laughs> Amazing. Mm -hmm. Everyone yeah. heard. So <laughs> yeah. uh, st start to send questions to Adrian. <laughs> yeah, right now. <laughs> right now. <laughs> okay, everyone has uh, have an amazing evening. And, thank you. Uh, you too. Thank you. It was nice talking to you. <laughs> Same. Bye. Bye.